Hello friends, welcome to Premier UPSC IAS. So as we are continuing with the geography class, so this is the part two of the world geography. Uh, let's see, geomorphic processes. One, landforms. There are mainly many forms of land on the surface of the earth. Landforms can be divided into three orders. First order, continents and oceans. Second order, mountains, plateaus and plains. Third order, hills, valleys, deltas, etc. All these landforms change with time. The areas where there is no now land once was a sea. For example, uh, 200 million years ago, there was a sea called Tethys in the area where the splendid Himalayas with their sky-touching peaks presently exist. Besides these slow changes, there are some violent changes in the form of explosions of volcanoes and of earthquakes. Landforms affecting forces. The forces affecting changes in the landforms can be divided into two, the following two categories. Landform changes due to force. Endogenic force inside the earth's surface. Exogenic force act on the earth's surface. Landforms endogenetic forces. The endogenic force is known as earth building forces and cause the formation of mountains, plateaus, etc. These forces cause the parts of the earth to rise or subside. On the basis of intensity, these forces can be divided into two subgroups, sudden endogenic forces and diastrophic forces. Sudden endogenic forces and landscape suddenly undergoes disintegration, example volcanic, earthquake, etc. Diastrophic forces. These forces act very slowly. It divided into two further subgroups such as vertical movement and horizontal movement. A. Vertical movement. It originates from the center of the earth and affects its surface. These movements are mainly associated with the mount for formations of continents and plateaus. Hence, these are also known as continent building or plateau building movements. Horizontal movements. There are forces which act on the earth's crust from side to side that is horizontally or tangentially. Structures produced by endogenetic forces. The distortion takes place more in sedimentary and metamorphic rocks than in the igneous rocks. The deformations created by the endogenetic forces can be grouped into two divisions. 1. Crustal bending. 2. Crustal fracture. Crustal bending, diastrophic force raise an area at a place. Broad domes are created in the process of crustal bending. The process of dome formation is known as warping. Folds are created when, when compression takes place on the crust. Due to endogenetic forces, part of the crust is raised up in the form of folds. Crustal fracture. The crust is being acted upon by tension, compression, rotation, etc., which cause the fracture of the crust. If the forces are strong and crack over weak areas, joints, great pressure and falls are formed. Landforms Exogenic forces The forces which exerted from the Earth's exterior or originate within the Earth's atmosphere are called exogenic forces or external forces. The main exogenic processes are the following, weathering, mass wasting, erosion, deposition. Gravity and gradients are the two things which make these agents mobile. Stress is produced in a solid by pushing or pulling. The gravitational force acts upon all earth materials having sloping surface and tends to produce movement of matter in the down slope direction this creates stress. A. Weathering it can be defined as the physical disintegration and chemical decomposition of rocks through the actions of various elements of weather and climate. Classification of weathering into three physical, chemical, biological. Physical or mechanical weathering. It depends on applied forces such as gravitational force, pressure, load and shearing stress, expansion force, changing temperature, crystal growth or animal activity, water pressure controlled by wetting and drying cycles. 
causes of physical weathering thermal expansion pressure gravitational forces unloading and expansion occur due to the removal of overlying rock load because of continued erosion causes vertical pressure release it produces disintegration of rock masses for example exfoliate dome expansion forces change in temperature and expansion is due to differential heating and the resulting expansion and contraction of surface layers and their subsequent exfoliation from the surface results in smooth rounded surfaces in rocks for example tors smooth surface frost weathering freezing thawing and frost wedging are most effective at high elevations in mid latitude range in cycles of freezing and thawing the weather becomes warmer and causes snow and ice to melt cause the frost weathering salt weathering salt weathering is rich rich salts in rocks expand due to thermal action hydration and crystallization it takes place at high temperature ranges between 30 to 50 degrees centigrade of surface temperatures in desert favors such as salt expansions the salt derives from an external source such as capillary rising ground water sea water along rocky coasts and atmospheric pollution etc chemical weathering it is due to solution carbonation hydroxy hydration or oxidation or reduction this kind of weathering mainly occurs in a rainy season calcium carbonate and magnesium bicarbonate minerals present in the limestone are soluble in water containing carbonic acid formed with the addition of carbon dioxide in water and are carried away in water as a solution common salt is also a rock forming mineral and it is susceptible to this process of solution carbonation it is a reaction of carbonate and bicarbonate with minerals and is a common process helping to break down of feldspar and carbonate minerals for example cave formation hydration it is the chemical addition of water minerals yet get hydrated and gradual increase in the volume of the material itself or rock for example calcium sulfate takes in water and turns to gypsum oxidation and reduction oxidation is the combination of a mineral with oxygen to form oxides or hydroxides iron manganese sulfur etc these are the minerals involved in this process breakdown of rock occurs due to the disturbance caused by the addition of oxygen biological weathering biological weathering is a contribution to or removal of minerals and ions from the weathering environment and physical changes due to growth or movement of organisms that is animals human and plants by animals burrowing and wedging by organisms like earthworms termites rodents etc help in exposing the new surfaces of chemical attack and assist in the penetration of moisture and air by human human beings by disturbing the vegetation plowing and cultivating soils and help in mix also help in mixing create and creating new contacts between air water and minerals in the earth materials by plants decaying plant and animal matter help in the production of humic carbonic acid carbonic and other acids which enhance decay and solubility of some elements plant roots exert tremendous pressure on the earth materials mechanically breaking them apart ba mass movement so let's continue with the mass movements the transfer of the mass of rock debris down the slope under the direct influence of gravity is known as the process of mass movement it classifies into two categories mass movement slow movement and fast movement mass movement that is slow movement creep it occurs on moderately steep and soil covered slopes it is extremely slow and imperceptible solid fluxion it is a gradual movement of wet soil or other material down a slope especially where frozen 
subsoil acts as a barrier to the percolation of water. It occurs in permafrost region. Rapid movements. Earth flow. Earth materials down the low angle terraces or hillsides. Mud flow. Rapidly flow down along the definite channels. Debris avalanche. It occurs in narrow tracks on steep slopes. Landslide. Courses of river. Upper course, lower course and middle course. Upper course, that is stage of youth. Erosion dominates. So, upper course, stage of the youth, erosion dominates. Source of the river, hilly or mountainous areas, formation of V-shaped valleys, existence of waterfalls, rapids and gorges. Lower course, that is stage of old. No, the second part will be middle course. Stage of maturity, transportation dominates. So, in the uh, youth stage, erosion dominates and in, during the maturity middle course, there is a transportation domination. Slowly, lateral erosion replaces the vertical erosion. Gradual disappearance of its V-shaped valley. Landforms like alluvial fans, Piedmont alluvial plains, meanders, etc. are forms. Lower course or stage of old and it is dominated by the deposition. Vertical erosion has almost stopped. Landforms like braided channels, flat plains, levees, meanders, oxbow lakes, deltas, etc. are formed. So, these three stages are the courses of river. Erosional and depositional landforms. Factors of erosion and deposition. There are the follow following factors which make this process of erosion and deposition possible. Running water, groundwater, glaciers, wind, ocean wave. Running water, erosional landforms, potholes and plunge pools. Potholes are circular depressions over the rocky beds of hill streams. Plunge holes are large deep potholes commonly found at the foot of a waterfall. Valleys, gorges and canyon. Valleys are formed as a result of running water. A gorge is a deep valley with very steep to straight sides. A canyon is similar like George but wider at its top than at its bottom. Incised or entrenched meanders are very deep wide meanders, loop like channels found cut in hard rocks. In the future course, they deepen and widen to form gorges or canyons in hard rock. River terraces are a result of vertical erosion by the stream. Running water depositional landforms, alluvial fans. Alluvial fans are found in the middle course of a river at the foot of slope or mountains. It loses its energy needed to transport much of its load and get dumped and spread as a broad low to the high cone-shaped deposits. Delta. Deltas are similar like an alluvial fan but develop at a different location and they are found at the mouth of the river. Meanders and Oxbow Lake. Meanders are loop-like channel patterns developed over the flood and delta plains. They are formed basically because of three reasons. Propensity of water on the bank of the river. Alluvial deposits irregular pattern. Coriolis force acting on water similar like wind. The meander becomes an oxbow lake along the side of the river. An oxbow lake starts out as a curb or a meander in a river. A lake forms as the river finds a different shorter course. The river makes a shortcut. Erosion and deposition eventually cause a new channel to be cut through the small piece of land at the narrow end of the meander. Oxbow lakes are the remains of the bend in the river. An oxbow lake gets its name from the U-shaped collar placed around an ox neck to which a plow is attached. It can also be called a horseshoe lake, a loop lake or a cutoff lake. Braided channels. Selective deposition of coarser materials causes the formation of central bar. It increases the lateral erosion. Riverine islands are the result of braided channels. Flood plains, natural levees, forms along with the side of the banks of the river. Groundwater, erosional landforms. Sinkholes, solution sink. It forms on the surface of rocks like limestone by the action of solution. The term doline is sometimes used to refer 
to collapse sinks. Several sink holes join together to form valley of sinks. They are called as lepis, caves. It forms on the beds of rocks, non-soluble, with limestone or dolomite in between or in areas where the limestone are dense, massive and occurring as thick beds, cave formation is prominent. Groundwater, depositional landforms, stalactites and stalagmites. It is commonly found in limestone caves. Stalactites are calcium carbonate deposits hanging from the roof. Stalagmites are calcium carbonate deposits rise up from the floor. Both join together. It gives rise to pillars or columns of different diameters. Glaciers, erosional landforms, cirque or quarries. A bowl-shaped depression formed due to the erosional activity of glaciers. When these depressions are filled with water, they are called as cirque lake or quarry lake or torn lakes. Hanging valleys or U-shaped valleys or jorts abrasion of the surrounding bedrock and this valley gradually gets filled with the seawater. Horns and reeds, sawtooth ridge, they are formed by the headward erosion of cirque wall. Glaciers, depositional landforms, moraine. Moraine are long ridges of deposits of glacial till. There are three main types of moraines, such as terminal moraines, deposits are at the end of a glacier, lateral moraines, deposited on both sides of a glacier, medial moraines, lateral moraines of two glaciers joined together. Eskers. During summer boulders, Blocks and some minor fractions of rock debris are carried away by streams and form ridges. Drumlins. Drumlins are elongated teardrop-shaped hills of rock, sand and gravel that formed under moving glacier ice. Forms of inverted spoon structure, small surface rocks seen in drumlins. Wind. Erosional landforms. Deflation hollows. The removal of loose particles from the ground by the action of wind and causes a shallow depression. They are called as deflation hollows. Mushroom tables. More bottom erosion in overlying rocks than the top. Mushroom tables or the mushroom rocks are venti facts in the shape of a mushroom. Periplanes. They are high relief structures in deserts and reduced to low featureless plains by the action of wind. Wind depositional landforms, sand dunes, desert region. The crescent shaped dunes are called as barchans, and sief is similar to barchans but has only one wing or point. Loess, the surface is covered by deposits of wind transported silt that has settled out from the dust storms over many thousands of years. Ocean wave, erosional landforms, cliffs, terraces, Caves, stacks, and stumps. These are the erosional landforms of ocean wave. Cliffs. Cliffs are common on the high rocky coasts. Terraces. Sloping platform covered by rock debris derived from the sea cliff behind. An elevation platform above the average height of the waves. Caves. Lower part of coastal rock get eroded leads to the formation of hollow part. Sea arches are for also formed in the same manner. Stacks. They are isolated standing rocks in the sea which were once a part of the cliff. Small underwater stacks are known as tums. Ocean wave depositional landforms. Bars, spits and lagoons. Bars are deposits of sand and gravel laid down by waves and currents which separate the shoreline from the sea. Spits are formed when one end of the bar is attached to the coast and other extends into the sea. A lagoon is generally connected with the sea through a narrow passage. For example, Pulikat and Chilka Lake. Beaches and dunes. They have excessively of small pebbles and even cobbles and called as shingle beaches. Sand dunes are formed just behind the beaches as long ridges parallel to the coastline. Factors, erosional landforms and depositional landforms. Uh, the factors for both the erosional and landforms and depositional landforms are same or if one common factor but the landforms are differing. Running water, if the factor is running water, then the landforms erosional are potholes, lungholes, valleys, gorges and canyon. 
and depositional landforms of running water are alluvial fans, meanders, oxbow lakes, braided channels, and flood plains, groundwater, sinkholes, and caves as erosional landforms, and stalactites and stalagmites as depositional landforms of groundwater, glaciers, cirque, quarries, hanging valleys, horns, and areeds are the erosional landforms of glaciers. Whereas moraines, eskers, and drumlins are the depositional landforms of glaciers. Wind, deflation, hollows, pediplanes, and mushroom tables are the erosional landforms of wind. Sand dunes and loess are the depositional landforms of wind. Ocean wave, cliffs, terraces, caves, stacks, and stumps are due to the ocean wave erosional landforms. And bars, spits, lagoons, beaches, and dunes are the depositional landforms due to ocean wave. Rocks, rocks and its types. The earth's crust is composed of rocks. Rock in geology, naturally occurring and coherent aggregate of one or more minerals is called as rock. There are three types of rock, sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic rocks. Igneous rocks, they form out of magma and lava from the interior of the earth. When upward movement of magma cools and turns into solid form, it is called as igneous rock. These rocks are classified as the follows, based on the texture. Example, granite, gabbro, pegmatite, basalt, volcanic breccia and tuff. Based on the occurrence, igneous rocks can be classified as intrusive, extrusive. Intrusive igneous rocks, slow process, formation, when magma solidifies below the earth's surface, mineral grains very large, type, plutonic rocks deep-seated and hypabyssal rocks shallow depth, example, granite, acidic igneous rocks 65% of silica, dolerite, etc. Extrusive igneous rocks, rapid process, formation by the cooling of the lava on the earth's surface, Type volcanic rocks. Example gabbro basalt. Both are basic igneous rocks, 55% of silica, etc. Sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are types of rock that are formed by the deposition of and subsequent cementation of mineral or organic particles on the floor of oceans or other bodies of water at the earth's surface. Lithification process. Rocks on the earth's surface are exposed to denudational agents and are broken up into various sizes of fragments. Such fragments are transported by different exogenous agencies and deposited. These deposits through compaction turn into rocks. In sedimentary rocks like sandstone, shale, etc., we see a number of layers or strata of varying thickness. So these are called as stratified rocks. On the mode of formation, it has been classified into three types. Mechanically formed clastic sedimentary rocks, organically formed biologically formed sedimentary rocks, and chemically formed sedimentary rocks. Mechanically formed or the clastic sedimentary rocks under excessive pressure and cementation. Example, conglomerate, breccia, sandstone, shale, etc. Organically or biologically formed sedimentary rocks, consolidation of organic matters from plants and animals. Examples, coal, limestone, chalk, shirt, etc. Chemically formed sedimentary rocks from various chemical reactions. Example, gypsum, rock salt, limestone, etc. Metamorphic rocks. These rocks form under the action of pressure, volume and temperature. PVT changes. Consolidated rocks undergo recrystallization and reorganization of materials within the original rocks. Dynamic metamorphism. Breaking and crushing of rocks without any appreciable chemical changes. Thermal metamorphism. Materials of rocks chemically alter and recrystallize. In the process of metamorphism, in some rocks, grains or minerals get arranged in layers or lines. Such an arrangement of minerals or grains in metamorphic rocks is called foliation or lineation. Metamorphic rocks are classified into the following. Foliated rocks, non-foliated rocks. Examples, nesoid, granite, cyanide, slate, schist, marble, quartzite, etc. Rock cycle. 
stage one magma cooling and crystallization then weathering and erosion then lithification and compacting and cementing for heat and pressure then melting magma igneous rocks sediments sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks geysers and hot springs these are examples of dynamic natural features on the earth surface geysers are those fractures that shoot out tall columns of hot water and steam into the air example old faithful in yellowstone yellowstone national park in wyoming geysers often are so co-located with other geothermal features such as hot springs mud pots and fumaroles Three critical elements are required to form a geyser, such as a water supply, a heat source, the proper kind of underground water circulation system. If only two of these three components are present, different features will form. For instance, if plenty of water is available but not much heat, a hot pool will be formed. Other instance, if plenty of water and also plenty of heat exist but not the proper kind of plumbing system, then a boiling hot spring is commonly formed in such areas. There are many places in the world where hot springs can be found, but geysers are extremely rare, largely due to all three specific requirements for their formation. Weather and Climate Difference between weather and climate. Weather shows short-term conditions of the atmosphere, while climate is the average daily weather for an extended period of time at a certain location. In other words, the weather is what you see outside on any specific day, the day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere at a place with respect to the temperature, humidity, rainfall, wind, speed, etc. is called weather at that place. The weather is such a complex phenomenon that it can vary over very short periods of time. All changes in the weather are caused by the sun. As the sun is the primary source of energy that causes changes in the weather, example, it may be 35 degrees centigrade and sunny or it could be at 2 degrees centigrade with heavy snow. Climate is the average of that weather. The average weather pattern taken over a long time, say 25 years, is called the climate of the place. Example, you can expect snow in the north in January or it to be hot and humid in the south in July. Elements of weather and climate The elements of weather and climate are the same. The important elements of both weather and climate are the following. Temperature, air pressure, wind, humidity, precipitation. Temperature. It is a very important element of climate and weather. The instrument for measuring the temperature is thermometer filled with mercury or alcohol. The difference between the maximum and the minimum temperatures of the day gives the diurnal range of temperature. An important factor that influences the distribution of temperature is insulation. Insulation is the incoming solar energy intercepted by the earth. The amount of insulation decreases from the equator towards the poles. Therefore, the temperature decreases in the same manner. Air pressure. Pressure is exerted by the air that is formed of a variety of mixed gases and has weight. The instrument for measuring pressure is a barometer invented by Galileo. The air pressure is highest at sea level and decreases with height. Horizontally, the distribution of air pressure is influenced by the temperature of the air at a given place. In areas where the temperature is high, the air gets heated and rises. This creates a low pressure area. Low pressure is associated with cloudy skies and wet weather. In areas having a low temperature, the air is cold. It is therefore heavy. Heavy air sinks and creates a high pressure area. High pressure is associated with clear and sunny skies. Air always moves from higher pressure areas to lower pressure areas. Wind. Wind is air in motion and it has each direction and speed. Hence, the movement of air from high pressure area to the low pressure areas is called as wind. A wind is named after the direction from which it blows. Example, the wind blowing from the west is called westerly. The instrument wide use for the determining wind direction is wind vane or weather rocock. The speed of the wind is typically measured by a wind gauge. Types of wind. Permanent winds, seasonal winds, local winds. Permanent winds. The trade winds, westerlies and easterlies are the permanent winds. These blow constantly throughout the year in a particular direction. Seasonal winds. These winds change the direction in different seasons. 
for example monsoons in india local winds these blow only during a particular period of the day or year in a small area for example land and sea breeze humidity when water evaporates from land and different water bodies it becomes water vapor moisture is the air at any time is known as humidity it measures the dampness of the atmosphere which varies greatly from place to place at different times of the day as the air gets warmer its capacity to hold the water vapor increases and so it becomes more and more humid when the water vapor rises it starts cooling the water vapor condenses causing the formation of droplets of water when these droplets of water become too heavy to float in the air then they come down as precipitation types of humidity absolute and relative humidity absolute humidity the actual amount of water vapor present in the air which is expressed in grams per cubic meter relative humidity the ratio between the actual amount of water vapor and the total amount the air can hold at a given temperature it is expressed as a percentage the instrument for measuring relative humidity is the hygrometer which comprises wet and dry bulb thermometers precipitation precipitation is defined as a water in liquid or solid forms falling to the earth for example rain snow hail and sleet are the common forms of precipitation rainfall including other forms of precipitation snow sleet and hail is always measured by a metal instrument called a rain gauge factors influencing the climate major factors influencing the climate are latitude or the distance from the equator altitude or the height from the mean sea level elevation continentality or the distance of from the sea ocean currents and winds relief and topography natural vegetation soil latitude or the distance from the equator the places near the equator are warmer than the places which are far away from it this is because the rays of the sun fall vertically on the equator and are slanting in the temperate and polar regions therefore the lower the latitude higher is the temperature and vice versa for example malaysia which is near the equator is warmer than england which is far away from the equator altitude or the height from the sea mean sea level elevation the temperature decreases with increasing height above the sea level this rate of decrease in temperature with altitude lapse rate is never constant it varies from place to place and from season to season the lapse rate is greater at the day time than at the night and greater on the elevated highlands than on level plains normal lapse rate for a vertical rise of 165 meters there is an average decrease in temperature at the rate of 1 degree centigrade continentality or the distance from the sea land surfaces are heated more quickly than water surfaces because of the higher specific heat of the water this accounts for the temperature extremes in the continental interiors as compared to that of the coastal areas the places far from the sea have a higher range of diurnal daily and annual temperatures mumbai 19 degree latitude has relatively lower temperature and higher rainfall than pune 18.5 degree latitude although both are almost situated on the same latitude ocean currents and winds both ocean currents and winds have an effect on temperature by transporting their heat or coldness into adjacent regions the warm ocean currents raise the temperature of the coast and sometimes bring rainfall while the cold currents lower the temperature and create fog near the coast local winds such as fan chinook mistral also leads to marked changes in the temperature relief and topography climate can be affected by mountains mountains receive more rainfall than low lying areas because as air is forced over the higher ground in cools causing moist air to condense and fall out as rainfall the higher the place is above sea level the colder it will be this happens because as altitude increases the air becomes thinner and has less ability to absorb and retain heat natural vegetation natural vegetation affects the temperature of the region significantly 
the thick foliage of the Amazon jungle cuts off much of the incoming insulation and in many places, sunlight never reaches the ground. During the daytime, trees lose water by transpiration so that the air above is cooled. Relative humidity increases, leading to the formation of mist and fog. Soil The natural soil depends upon its texture, structure and composition. These qualities vary from soil to soil. Light soils reflect more heat than darker soils, which are better absorbers. Dry soils like sands are very sensitive to temperature changes, whereas wet soils like clay retain much moisture and warm up or cool down more slowly. Other influencing factors El Nino effect. El Nino refers to the irregular warming of surface water in the Pacific Ocean. The warmer water pumps more energy and moisture into the atmosphere, altering the global wind and rainfall patterns. Resultants Tornadoes in Florida, smog in Indonesia, and forest fires in Brazil. The cold counterpart of El Nino is known as La Nina. El Nino Southern Oscillation this is the periodic change in pressure conditions which is referred to as the southern oscillation. These changes in the pressure condition being evolved over the Pacific and the Indian Oceans are connected with the phenomena of El Nino. This connected phenomena is mentioned as the El Nino Southern Oscillation or ENSO. In normal times, when the tropical South Pacific Ocean experiences high pressure, alternatively, the tropical Indian Ocean experiences low pressure conditions. However, these pressure conditions are sometimes reversed and this results in low pressure in the Pacific and alternatively high pressure in the Indian Ocean. Precipitation Tiny drops of water vapor will condense around dust particles. Masses of minute water droplets or ice crystals at a considerable height above the sea level form clouds, cirrus, cumulus or stratus. At ground level, rain, haze, mist or fog are formed. At higher altitude, region, temperatures below freezing points, snowfalls occur. Human influence The factors above the, uh, the affect the climate naturally. Early on in human history, our effect on the climate would have been quite small. However, as the population increased and trees were cut down in large numbers, so our influence on the climate is increased. Deforestation Deforestation reduces the amount of carbon dioxide that is taken up by forests.